Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's so great to meet you finally. Oh, nice to meet I'm you uh, too. Welcome to the center. People's ideas of a homeless shelter. When you say that, they probably think, you know, really dreary and... Well, definitely. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, see, I see it in black and white. Mm -hmm. Or sepia. <laughs> yeah. The way that they find us most of the time is we have a, a homeless outreach center, drop-in center on Santa Monica Boulevard. Okay. So it's right on the street. That's the front lines of homelessness. Yeah. And so youth can go into that program and they can get three square meals a day there. They, we have a GED program, we have a clothing closet, we have shower facilities. Great. Um, so they can get all their basic needs met. Unfortunately, a lot of those youth have to go back out on the streets this night because mm. we know that there's um, there's between two and 3,000 uh, LGBT youth on the street every night in Hollywood, yeah. um, but about 6,500 youth in general. Woo! So it's a lot of youth. But, uh, that is a lot. So our 24 here is not really, it's just a scratch on the surface, but you know, but at least those 24 out on, are not on the streets. So. Right. I found this place to do the drop-in center. Another one of the, the trannies that I was hanging out with on San Monica told me about the drop-in, and from there it just kind of started my whole journey. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey? and how you became homeless? I grew up in a Mexican family. I'm Mexican Salvadorian. Don't let the red hair throw you off. It totally did. Did it? <laughs> yeah, it usually does. It totally did. It I was does. like, Mexican Salvadorian, red hair, okay. Yeah. All right. So, you know, it was a big family, um, you know, single mom. And then once I realized I could like run away and leave the house, I would do that. Like I would sneak out the bathroom window and just at night be out on the street, just Rather being alone on the street than being at home, because at home was not okay for me. It was not safe. You're homeless every day is about how am I going to eat? How am I going to find a safe place to, to put my stuff and put myself? Right. Um, and a lot of the kids turn to, um, to drugs to stay awake at night right. because they're not safe if they oh. fall asleep. There's um, one cot in here. Okay. And otherwise, um, other times we'll put more, co you know, we'll, it doesn't look like it can fit much more, but we'll put some extra. Um, as much as many as we can put in. The most striking thing that we see a, a lot of the time is because LGBT youth tend to be talked to in a sexual way all the time. That's how they're described by society. Right. So often, you know, you'll come into their room and you'll see up on their bulletin board, you'll see really kind of sexualized pictures. Right. And then you'll look on their bed and there's a teddy bear. And mm. so, you know, what we afford them is the opportunity to be kids again so they, are, they can take out the teddy bear. So the teddy right. bear part of them is there as well as the, the pictures of, of pop stuff that they, that they like. Our youth are homeless in far greater proportions. Um, so for, we're about 40%. Our youth are 40% of the homeless population, even though they're, you know, conservatively, they're 7 to 10% of the whole population. So four times Whoa. more likely to be homeless than straight you know, heterosexual youth. Whoa. Yeah. So I that's one big that thing. For a exactly. 40%. And really all the risk factors are like that, suicidality, mental health issues, because our youth are stigmatized in society. Families actually throw their youth out because they're gay. Um, you know, it's not like if you're a, a youth of color, you're gonna, you know, you're in the closet about being right. black. Right. Oh, you know. Your parents are all surprised. <laughs> Mama already knows I'm black. black. <laughs> don't, Mama, I'm black. Don't tell anybody. You know, yeah, exactly. it's like, you better get out of my house because you're black. <laughs> you know, it's right. like we may face some other things, That's but right. you're not yeah. going to actually be let out because right. of it. It's the only identity, really, that I can oh, think of wow. that parents would kick their kids out for being that. Just the event of having the feeling of not being wanted at home not being cared for at home, not being seen, acknowledged that love at home is traumatic enough to like want to be like, okay, I'm going to go the other way. That in itself is traumatic. Sure. So many of us would say that, you know, that our spirituality is, um, is kind of the basis for why we enjoy what we enjoy uh, and what yeah. gets us through the tough times. Exactly. And when you look at a bunch of young people who seem to have been stripped of their spirituality, right. society tells them so often that they're not, you know, they're not worthy or God Exactly. Hates them and stuff it's like, like that. um, no, yeah. a, a lot of times, you know, I mean, the the love in the within this community is is very apparent. I started experiencing like these people, these strangers loving me, like doing loving acts and just unconditional love towards, I'd be like, you know, what is that? And yeah. then once I started to believe that they wanted, that they were loving me not because, you know, like, oh, it's a sick kid, let me take care. They were loving me because they saw the person I could potentially become. And when I was coming to, to that and believing that, I was just like, you know, if they're loving me, then there's something about me that I could love too. Something um, that a gesture, a loving gesture, being kind, being compassionate, probably being non-judgmental. 
Yeah. You know, being open, that that really makes that big of a difference. It really does. I think it's important for people to know that that matters. As corny and cheesy as it sounds, it's like, it's true. Yeah? It's really true. What's your life like now? My life like now is amazing. I Sometimes I wake up in my own bed, you know, not in a stairwell, in my bed with pillows and covers and a window that I have open. and. I wake up with kids, play, neighbors playing, and you know, and I wake up and I'm like, is this real? And then after that second, I, I go, yeah, this is, this is real. People here really care. What can 